And we're right where we began. Nine for Johns Hopkins, nine for Syracuse. We'll be back with more great action in a moment. Oh, my God. 12 cars wide. It's uninterrupted, continuous coverage when pay-per-view cable TV puts you in the driver's seat for a 200-mile-per-hour chase to victory lane. 500 miles of high-speed drama with no commercial interruptions, so you won't be watching this. When professional photographers have one shot to shoot the best, they make sure they use the best. Photo fest. When you should be seeing the race. And Bill Elliott. Join Daytona 500 winner Darrell Waltrip, the King Richard Petty, and others in a thrilling chase to the checkered flag. Also, we'll have a call-in 800 number for you to ask questions of some of the 40 NASCAR drivers as they battle each other at Pocono. It's the Miller 500, June 18th Live. Only pay-per-view cable TV brings you coverage like this. It makes a great Father's Day gift. Strike it rich with the PBA Summer Tour. Our season gets rolling as America's top seniors battle it out at the Showboat Senior Invitational. Wednesday night, live on ESPN. Try stunts for experienced thrill seekers to stream to record. See them on Guinness Records World of Sports. Wednesday night on ESPN. Back at Bird Stadium in College, Maryland, on the campus of the University of Maryland, will be for 30 and attack. Here, this is your sixth bat. This is the start. That simple. Most teams have to mismatch. And In the crease, Goldie was in the... Oh, well, Bertie was in there. Bad call, I think. The referee, was, I mean, Kesnick was back in. That was a, a bad call. We'll see the replay. Did he if try I'm to right, him in there? If I'm right, the goalie stepped back in. Kesnick, now watch this shot, first of all. The only way this shot can go in is because it hit the stick of Kesnick. He stood tall. But now watch him go around one whole time. He goes out of the crease. That means he can't go back in. Now watch, if you keep going, he'll put his hand down and yep. he'll cut touch in the crease there. Right that's there. an infraction. It should have been Syracuse ball. But as we so often point out, the officials do not have the benefit of instant replay. He was right there on top of the play there. I'm surprised he missed it. Wilkins can't control the pass and Syracuse will get it back. So a moot point perhaps. Or yep, they got to clear the ball and uh, that'll give them the possession again. So far, three goals for Syracuse in that ill-fated third quarter against one on an extra man play for Hopkins. Syracuse, things going their way, Tom, but they need to get a little breathing room. They'd like to come out of this quarter with at least a goal lead. Penalty, of course, is up. It was only a 32nd penalty against Volker, so the sides are playing even. And of course, if you're Hopkins, you want to just keep it close. They're doing a great job. They, too, would like to go ahead and fight through this third quarter, come out with at least a one-goal lead. Pass is controlled by Paul Gate. Now drops it on his own and has to go back and get it. He's had a sensational day. The last move he made to cause the uh, penalty. Over two people. Cut the left stick, left stick in the left hand, rather. Here will do it again. Gets by Volker, comes in and shoots wide to the left. All or nothing play, just like Gary had. That'll be ball into the Hopkins possession. It's a good play, though, Tom, because it's a mismatch against Volker. He's eating Volker up. Volker, the young kid, watch this. The power of the 200-pound... Paul Gate, he comes in all or nothing for that shot and literally just missed the six by six or else he would have had a goal there as well. That's a good gamble as we look at Simmons on the sideline. And Johns Hopkins will take control of the ball and play starts in and here we go with 7-11 left in the third quarter. Pace of the game has slowed down in the third quarter from what it was in the second. But I think if there was any message to the halftime speech by Simmons, it was that you can play it slow down. Don't get frustrated. I seem to think that they're a lot less frustrated with the tempo in this half. Juan and Kessinick playing catch with it now for Johns Hopkins. They have an extra man because the goal is out of the goal. So that's why there's an extra man for the clearing team. Hopkins, in this case, little or no uh, move to take the ball away from Syracuse. Kelly gets it over to Johnny Wilkins to Panetta. 
This is the takeaway on this McCabe. They've, missed, they've mixed up the defense now. Don't forget, this is a new guy on Panetta. Let's see how he does. Panetta gets a pick from Iim. Panetta cuts in. Jeff Iim puts a pick on Pat McCabe. It gave Panetta just enough room to wind up and get some leverage. Panetta's getting my attention. I didn't think he was that dominant, but he sure is taking and ripping apart this defense. It's his fifth goal of the game, and he's done it against the two best defenders. First, Stoper, now McCabe. McCabe's got a good stick. He's not a position player. Watch. So he gets out of position. He misses the stick check, and then all of a sudden, Panetta is too close, and he beats Halem one-on-one. -on -one. Well, Johns Hopkins, 10-9 leaders right now. 6.24 left in the third quarter. And Panetta's only a more, so he's going to be around for a couple more games. Back in there to take the faceoff for Syracuse is Kurt Pratt against Dresden Pollock, so maybe Roy Simmons is going to alternate his faceoff men. And Syracuse initially has possession in the person of Steve Scaravazzino, but he can't hang on, and Hopkins looking to come back up with it, and they do, and this is Billy Guan. Hopkins showing you the great team concept, uh, Tom. Many times in this game, even though the numbers are heavily in favor of Hopkins, many times... Syracuse has gotten the face off, but just haven't stayed with it long enough. Hopkins never gives up, and consequently come out with it more often than not. Hopkins in the Syracuse zone. Jeff Iim against Stouffer over there on the far side. I'm trying to cut in past Mark Stouffer. Didn't work. Resin Pollock gets it back to... Greg Kelly. Well, he's got a good match here against the Swift Stick. Kelly takes the shot. Doesn't get through on goal. It's picked up by Pat McCabe. McCabe still pressing behind the net. Long pass, and it's corralled very nicely there by Dan Cahey. they got something going. They push it a little bit. Hopkins drops in, though. Cuts off the transition. Five minutes and five seconds left. Third quarter. Clock run. Maryland, rather Syracuse, and John Hopkins for the national title. Blue Jays lead at 10 tonight from College Park. Maryland. TNT midfield's in there. That explosive midfield. The Gates. And, of course, dumps it. Marichek taking his time, looking over the situation. Good matchup for uh, Marichek against McNeely. He gets in. Gets his foot and shoots. And Kessin is quick with that. Stick again with a save. Wise first team All American. It's just tough to beat. I think the biggest difference in this game, maybe in the bottom line so far, is that Kesnick is making the big saves. Halem is not a great goalie against a good one. John Hopkins with it. Jeff Iim and substitutions come in for both teams. Brendan Kelly and Wilkins in there along with Lucas. I think a little bit of the heart of the Syracuse defense is gone because uh, they're surprised, I'm sure that Panetta and company have handled him so easily. This is not a high scoring offense. Panetta again shoots and a save is made or maybe hit the pipe. I'll take that a pipe. That was a pipe shot again. Panetta beating the offense almost at will. 3.59 left in the third quarter. Our score, John Hopkins 10, Syracuse 9. Back to College Park in a moment. It's ever so tough being ranked number one and not being ranked. Playing the game without getting gamey. What assists me is Right Guard Sport Stick from Gillette with its maximum protection and aromatically airy scents. It's the essence of good gamesmanship. After all, when one is capable of home runs, why play foul? Right Guard Sport Stick, deodorant and antiperspirant. Anything less would be uncivilized. As long as there have been barbecues, there have also been flare-ups. And as long as there have been flare-ups, man has invented ways to stop them. Now there's Charbroil with their new Flare Fighter Grill. Its unique shutter grid puts the clamps on flare-ups with a flick of a wrist. Because you can't cook a great steak if it's on fire. Charbroil, we work best when the heat is on. Less than three minutes now left in the third quarter. Don Zimmerman's John Hopkins Blue Jays lead Roy Simmons, Syracuse Orangeman, 10 to 9. And they've really, again, I know full well how good this Hopkins coaching staff is, but they continue to shock me and impress me every year. I think they're a little bit on the light side of the talent on this field, but they are controlling the game. This is Brian Lucas. He comes in, shoots, and it's 11 to 9. Lucas 
with the goal. Palin is really talking to himself. He's looking at the sideline, giving the coaching staff an excuse. He's saying it was tipped, it was tipped. Simmons has got a real tough decision here, Tom. He may have to pull Palin. He's not effective at all today. Watch this shot. Come right down. Luke has the beats his defense easily hauled and just shoots hard against Palin. Not a great shot. A shot that Palin's got to save if you're playing in the championship game. His seventh goal of the season. A lot of pressure. We'll have to see what Simmons does. He's going to be pressured to maybe make a change in goalie. I'm not so sure. Nobody's warming up at the time. Brian Luke gets goal. Unassisted. Gives Hopkins a two-goal lead with less than two minutes, 30 seconds to go in the third quarter. But remember, Syracuse is so explosive on offense. This is Paul Gate against the short stick. Double teamed is Gate. Trying to find somebody open. Gets it over to Greg Burns. Now Syracuse has to pull back for a second. This is Rodney Thompson. Dumpson looks like he wants to shoot. Gets in there. He's double teamed. Controls again, and Dumpson does a nice job getting a shot away. It's wide, but Syracuse should maintain possession, and they do. Dumpson's forcing things a little bit. Uh, you ought to take your time. Again, you've got two great shooters out there in the Gate Brothers, Gary and Paul. Check coming out. Jim Egan going in for a So they're looking for a little bit more ball control. Egan started on this team last year, Tom, for the national champion team of Syracuse. So they don't lose anything with Egan in there. What they get is a guy who can control the ball a little bit better, not force it like the young Marichek might. Zolberti, they call him Z-Man. He's trying to get open behind the net. Paul Gate has it. Good matchup. He's been beating Volker all day. He might do it again here. Volker wants him to go to his left. Double team is Gate. But his twin brother, Gary, comes up with it. Nice fake by Gary Gate. Runs his man Petromala into a pick, but Volker's with him. Good defense by Volker. The crowd appreciating the way that Volker and Petromala are playing the gate. It's the best against the best. Petromala knocks it away from Gary Gate. I forget we're down here in the south. They want Hopkins to show that they get they deserve a little bit of respect against these fabulous gate brothers who get all the media attention. Dumpson comes in. Can't forget him. He shoots and it is saved by Kessenick as he got part of his stick on it. And Kessenick hustles to get protection for John Hopkins. I tell you, we had a weird angle on that, Tom, but I thought the ball went in the goal. I did too for a second. I thought it went off the far net. Let's see if we can see it here. Good possession for Syracuse. Almost two minutes worth. Watch the ball come in. Not on that shot, but on the other. This shot right here is we rolled it far, farther forward. I think it came back and hit the net right behind him. Right here on this shot. No, it doesn't look like it. An optical illusion. Optical illusion. Anyhow, Johns Hopkins gains control, but under a minute to go now. Okay. Third quarter, 44 seconds to be exact. And Hopkins has got to be ecstatic. They've maintained their two-goal lead throughout most of this third quarter. Zimmerman barking out instructions, keeping the intensity level high on his team. They've scored two straight goals and refusing to give in to Syracuse. Syracuse with a lot of pressure now. Two goals down. This is a new thing for them. Oh, Ciccaroni fast to Kastanik, and the pressure for Kastanik to carry it out. Syracuse has got a golden opportunity now with 22 seconds left in the quarter. Sure would love to pick up one here. They came into the third period down by two. And all that work and that explosive start goes for naught if they don't pick up one here. That was, it was 8-6, and then Syracuse came out to tie it up at 8-8. It was tied up at 9-9. And the Blue Jays have scored the last two. You can see what they're going to work up. They've got Egan, the control man, in there. Now, now here comes Paul Gate. He wants to take that challenge of going against Volker. He's been successful all day, and that's what they're going to put their money on. Gate working in, working in, working in. Can't get it. Gets out to Zolperti, who can't control it. Ten seconds left in the corner. Kessenick is out of the net. He's back there trying to defend. Five seconds left in the corner. Ciccarone hits the turf. Clock rolls, and that'll do it. That'll end the third quarter as Henry Flair again. And the crowd here in Maryland, primarily winning for Johns Hopkins, loves it. The score, Johns Hopkins 11, Syracuse 9. We'll be back with the fourth quarter and maybe more. Who knows? In a moment.